right. It's December. That means two things. One, ice fishing is here. People are hitting the first ice. I just haven't had time yet. I just got the shed fairly picked up. Don't look around too hard. It's real messy. Uh, but I just got my ice fishing stuff out, so I'm gonna be getting on the ice very soon. But two, it means a gear video. This year's gear video, slightly different than past. So I've done, I think, three years of gear videos. I think three years, one, two, three. I think it's around three years. Uh, and now this, this last year, we have added nothing. Last ice season, I went through the whole year and added nothing of note. You know, the first time I made the video, um, we had a bunch of equipment that I had just bought, so I made a video. The second video I made, I got a new ice shack, I invested in iFish Pros, I, I fell in love with some new rods. Uh, the third video was like expanding on those, like, hey, this is what went wrong the first year, this is what to look out for, pros and cons, uh, and little tips and things that I use. And now this year, I don't know quite what to do for a gear video because it's all the same stuff. So three old gear videos all have great information. I don't think there's a product in any of them that I am like, take it off the shelf, don't ever use it. Um, there are some things I would like to discuss um, with a few of them. So I'm gonna bring them up and show them to you. But for the most part, this is just gonna, I'm gonna try to make this just a real quick list this is what I use and why video, uh, even though it's very similar to the previous years, I wanna get the info out there. I'm gonna start with the most controversial one. Let's start some arguments. <laughs> K-Drill is the best goddamn ice auger that money can buy and you can't change my mind. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's great, I love my K-Drill. Um, obviously, I'm joking. Um, it isn't the best auger that money can buy, however, it is my favorite auger to date. We had this ion all of last year, um, working in tandem with the K drill, but when it came time to go drill a hole, I was still grabbing this K drill with my Ryobi on it nine out of 10 times. The weight one is incredible. It's very light. Even with the clam auger plate, it's still like maybe eight to 10 pounds. Like it's so light. Uh, the chipper blades, I've never had to give a thought to yet to this day. It's still drilling just as, it's, it's seemingly still drilling just as good as day one uh, because of the chipper blades. And the clam auger plate's still killing it. I did add a gearbox uh, to these to down gear it. Drills holes a little bit slower, but it takes all of the pressure off the drill, all of the minimum torque spec drill that I use, the Ryobi. Uh, the gearbox is very helpful. So all of these things linked down below, I still 100% suggest it if you have a powerful drill, just go get yourself a K drill. However, with that being said, 2022, 2023 season, as you're seeing this title, um, Ion just released the Ion Alpha and everything that I've seen from it from other videos is incredible and it's priced very well. So it's definitely worth a thought. If you're gonna spend the money on a new auger this year, the Ion Alpha is something to take a look at, um, but ultimately, get yourself a K-Drill. Quickly gonna mention, I had a terrible, terrible tip-up year last year as far as catching fish on, on tip-ups. Here's an iFish Pro 1. I added my own insulation to it with just some hot glue. Bought a hole cover, shaved it down to fit the shape, put some hot glue in all the way around it, this works better than this does. This is an iFish Pro 2.0. It comes with insulation. Uh, you're going to have hole freezing problems regardless with the iFish Pros, no matter what, because the hole that the line goes through here is just so large. So much cold air gets down in there. They're gonna freeze up. But the self-insulated, which I'm probably gonna do to the 2.0s anyway, just add some more insulation to them, uh, works better. Not sure if it's because it's better insulation or it's closer to the bottom. As you can see here, this one's not all the way down. Um, I'm not quite sure the science behind it. I just know the iFish Pro 2.0 comes insulated, but you might wanna think about still putting some hole covers uh, uh, in there manually. But no complaints. I have still not lost any pieces or parts to the iFish Pro. Uh, 
I love them. Still love the iFish Pros. I don't want to go any other route as far as tip-ups go. Absolutely love these. That is a perfect segue into rods and reels. I'm gonna be real quick on this one because this has not changed at all. Um, but for my jigging rod, this is my favorite, a Black Betty 13 fishing, 1-3 fishing. I've seen it said and heard both ways uh, on a 27 medium like tickle stick. This is my favorite setup all around because I am an all species fisherman. I can go out and catch little tiny panfish. I can go rip the jaws on some walleyes. I've caught my biggest walleye ever on this rod and reel specifically. Um, and I, you know, it works for everything. So if you gotta buy one rod, this tickle stick medium light with a 1-3 fishing reel, I think is a, it's an awesome route to go. Last year, I talked about, last year I talked about not losing sight of where we've come from. This, that, and back strength and fast tips. Talk about all that bull, but at the end of the day, like remember where we came from, be grateful what we have and the options that are available to us. Yes, these are far more expensive, but you can find cheaper versions of all this stuff that work well and uh, will get you in the game. So. I just want to remember, just remind everyone, when we get into the comment section arguing about equipment, remember where we came from and be grateful for where we are and uh, the, the, the advances that we've experienced through our lifetime. Um, that's my jigging rod. This is my standard iFish Pro setup. I have some 50 pound braid on here with a, I think a nine or 11 pound uh, floral carbon leader with a very small treble. Uh, some of mine will have a single hook, but it's a small treble. And then in the standard iFish Pro setup, I got a bullet weight to hold it down there. And then the, the trigger, obviously. Um, this is specifically a 28 heavy Sonicore by 13 Fishing as well. It just happens to be their stuff's on sale when I go to the store or something. I'm not out there. I wasn't out there specifically looking for one 3 13 Fishing stuff when I was getting my iFish Pro setups. But I believe this combo at the time was $19.99 or something. Yeah, I'm doing that. Uh, that is a price that I can get behind. So that's, I have two of these for my Fish Pros and then I just have a conglomerate of other things. Um, whatever's cheapest at the store when I go there for my other iFish Pro stuff. But Eagle Claw Storage, been going three years strong now, Toss, literally tossing it in and out of the back of the truck, bounce around the side by side. It's been, uh, it's been phenomenal. No broken rods, nothing like that yet. So Eagle Claw Storage, still great. Last year, we upgraded to this bad boy for a heater, <laughs> the big buddy. Uh, not gonna lie, it's overkill for our shack. I have a 2600. If you put it on high, you were literally out of your shack because it was 100 degrees. Uh, you had a medium, it would still be very hot. It was essentially medium on the big buddy is very close to the high on the regular Mr. Buddy. <laughs> so keep that in mind. And then we found ourselves running it on low with the fan on. There's a built-in fan in this big buddy heater with some D batteries. Uh, definitely worth the money though. Like when you had to warm up quick, man, this, this got it done fast. Uh, the only complaint is when it's running on low on a 20 pound tank, it likes to flicker a little bit. Uh, that could get annoying if things not functioning perfectly bother you. Uh, that was my only complaint with this. We got a brand new hose for it um, and it was still a little flickery on low when you're running a 20 pound tank. As far as my favorite baits go that are on my jigging rod, there are two of them. If I am pan fish, crappie fishing, whatever it may be, it is this Northland Tackle Puppet Minnow. I don't know if it's the little red eye or what, uh, the real eye inserts, there's actual little beads in there. I don't know if it's that or anything else, but these just seem to perform and outfish the jigging wraps and everything else out in the universe. I don't know why, I love them. Uh, and my personal experience with these is go buy three or four or five of them. Uh, and my favorite specifically is this, uh, I believe it's called like Purple Tiger. It is a glow in the dark purple with a red eye. Absolute favorite, crappie, panfish, perch, everything will eat this. Uh, and then if we're out jigging for, for walleyes, I'm running a gold spoon. Uh, we, majority of the time when we are walleye fishing, we're on Mille Lacs. It's just the easiest lake to get to for a day trip for me. Uh, and it's gold. Gold is the money ticket there. Uh, the couple of trips we went up there last year, people would try other jigs. As soon as they put a gold one on, they'd catch two or three fish. So gold spoon for walleye fishing, puppet minnow, 
99% of the other times. Uh, this puppet minnow you know, won me a contest last year, so you know, that's a big win, right? Contest winning minnow, whatever you want to say. All right, I hope I summed everything up quickly. Uh, I just got done talking and rambling about what I use to go ice fishing, and I wanted it to be quick this year because ultimately, um, nothing new or game changing has happened this year, you know? Uh, other than Ion Alpha, there's nothing crazy or new, you know? The FL18 is still a great choice for a flasher. If you have the money, go buy a, a Garmin Live Scope. Like, nothing is game changing in the last couple years. When I first did these gear videos back in the day, you know, inline reels were just becoming popular and people had questions and I wanted to talk about pros and cons, but now we're four or five years in and nothing's really that crazy and iFish pros were just popping up and <laughs> you know, like there's a lot of cool stuff and technology to talk about, but in the last two-ish years, three years, nothing crazy new groundbreaking has really come out to talk about. So, so ultimately all the information's already out there if you would like me to elaborate on anything more in depth, talk to me in the comments down below uh, and I'll give you any and all info that I can find or use or personal experience that I can uh, give you guys. I know there's gonna be a lot of comments about that K-Drill. I just know it. I just know it. But uh, ultimately, uh, we're getting out there and we're getting ice fishing very soon. So I would have already been on the lakes once if I would have had this all out and picked up so I could reline things, but it was all literally in storage. So either way, I'm rambling a little too much here at the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Look forward to the review video and then the first ice video, uh, they're coming down the pipe. So without further ado, make sure you guys like, share, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, see you on the ice.